We'll now discuss a few more points garnered from Dr. Cohen's book, Christ Killers. We'll see that Cohen both verifies and adds to points previously made in this series, as he illuminates some of the factors that drove medieval anti-Semitism. From Cohen's presentation, we can derive four relevant summary points about medieval anti-Semitism, which can be added to the point in our prior vid about which New Testament texts formed the basis for discussion. The first point is that medieval persecutors turned more focus on the alleged misdeeds of Jews of their own day than they did on Scripture. Among many examples, Cohen offers that of Peter the Venerable, who in the mid-1100s vented his anger towards the Jews of his day for their alleged insults and blasphemies. Although Peter does go on to accuse Judeans of the first century of impiously killing Jesus, he raises this as a minor point in a much larger goal of his own interest, freeing the Holy Land from Muslim domination. By a sort of perverse twist, Muslim occupiers of the Holy Land inspired crusaders like Peter to use the death of Jesus at the hands of Jews as an encouragement to friends of God to kick the Muslims out of the land those Jews occupied some 1,000 years earlier. The second point is that even when anti-Semitic authors used scripture, they freely embellished it. We've already seen how early authors reassigned Roman duties to Jewish actors contrary to the Gospels. No less questionable were various embellishments on the Passion narrative, additions to the text which varied in their historical reasonableness, but were always calculated to affirm hatred. Not satisfied with the sparse descriptions of the Gospels, one author, St. Bonaventure, made this declaration. While in historical and medical terms this may relate nothing implausible, it's also the type of detail the authors of the Gospels felt no need to provide. The third point is that corporate responsibility was used so flexibly as to become ludicrous. The apex of this sort of tactic could be found in Luther, who managed to also blame Catholics of his day for crucifying Jesus on the grounds that they opposed the true Protestant doctrine. For that reason, the Pope shared in the same everlasting guilt as the Jews did. As Cohen remarks, this sort of reasoning testifies to the versatility of the Christ-killer motif. One wonders whether, if he were alive today, Luther would also have wrangled in Mormons to share the guilt. Finally, as an echo to a point made earlier in this series, Jewish responses to the Christ-killer charge almost never denied the charge. This is the most counterintuitive point of all. Jews of the medieval era seldom responded to the charge, You crucified Jesus, by saying, No, we didn't. Cohen lists six responses by Jewish commentators. The last of these was that the Judeans did not crucify Jesus, and it was only rarely used at this time. Instead, responses acknowledged responsibility in some way and justified it. Other responses re emphasized that the New Testament itself, in passages like Luke 23:34, absolved Judeans of responsibility. With that, we'll have a wrap-up for this series in the next vid, where we'll draw some conclusions concerning what has been said by... certain people. See you then.